The following is a presentation of the Fairfax Network. Welcome to Universal Words, the show that selects vocabulary having universal concepts. Yes, every word we present has a place in every language. That means they're universal and important to know. During these lessons, we will inform you, entertain you, quiz you, and challenge you. Why? Because expanding vocabulary cultivates the mind. That's why. So let's start with word number one. The first vocabulary word for today's lesson is comprehensive. Its definition, including much. For instance, if you went to the doctor because you thought you broke your finger, that would be a limited exam. But when you go to have an annual checkup, the doctor will give you a more comprehensive exam. It will include more measurements, more medical tests. The doctor might even want to examine your blood. I think the older you are, the more comprehensive those checkups are. So stay young. Things that are comprehensive include final tests, museums, and world atlases. And I'll tell you one more thing that's comprehensive. This show, Universal Words. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because we include science, geography, Latin, philosophy, math, chemistry, linguistics, statistics. Okay, we get the idea. Universal Words includes a lot. It's comprehensive. Thank you, Mr. Pluribus. I hope you can see why this is such a great word. And now for word number two succinct. It means short and clear, to the point, concise, not beating around the bush. The bottom line, you might know some people that take so long to say so little that classes should be offered on how to be more succinct. And now, in keeping with the word succinct, we'll move on to number three. Cognition. Cognition means awareness, being alive, seeing, hearing, smelling, and knowing all wrapped up into one word. Some people have more cognition than others. Let me share an actual classroom experiment on cognition. Two students from a different grade walked through our classroom. When they left the room, they were asked to make a list of all the things they had seen in the classroom. One student made a list of 11 items and could not remember anything else. The other student listed 42 items. When you see things that other people don't notice, you have good cognition. The next word is mass media. I'd like to define this word by giving examples. Newspapers, magazines, TV, radio, CDs, and the internet are probably the best examples of mass media. These are the ways that billions of people around the world receive information. Now it seems that many feel that the word mass media is too long or clumsy. And so some people, including the newspapers themselves, just take out the word mass, leaving media by itself. I call this a wordectomy. But I assure you that mass media means the same thing as media. Calibrate is our next word. It means to adjust or to mark with measurement lines. Let me tell you one way to calibrate a bathroom scale. Find a 10-pound weight from a set of barbells or exercise weights. It can be two fives or a 20-pound weight. Just get a weight that's already been weighed and labeled. Put it on the scale. If it doesn't indicate the proper weight, find the adjustment knob and calibrate it to the weight you have on the scale. Now, if this causes problems in your family, please remember that mistakes can be made in the factory. And if you like calibrating, make your own ruler or scale. Or make a collection of calibrations of thermometers, postal scales, protractors, AM FM radio tuners, and analog watch faces. The next three words are science words and relate to how light passes through things, if it passes through at all. The first one is transparent. You can see through things that are transparent. Not only does light pass through, you can see images on the other side clearly. The best example is a window. Most glass, water, atmosphere, 
Sandwich baggies and the cornea of the eye are also transparent. The next word is translucent. This describes things that allow light through, but you can't see images that are on the other side clearly. As light passes through, it's diffused or spread out in all different directions. Translucent glass is used to let light into a room while giving privacy at the same time. Translucent screens are used in kaleidoscopes and also to make silhouettes. Put on your own silhouette play at night using a lamp and a white bed sheet. The last word relating to light is opaque. Things that are opaque do not allow light through at all. Aluminum foil, cardboard, leather, and a ribeye steak are good examples of opaque objects. But be careful. Many things that appear opaque are really translucent, such as loose leaf paper, most envelopes, and some rocks, like this rose quartz, which has a light in the center. Word number nine is organic. Its definition, anything that has grown. Organic things always contain carbon. We're talking about all plant and animal life, whether it's living or has lived. A wooden ruler is organic because it originally grew as a tree. A plastic ruler is inorganic because the plastic is made from chemicals. A wool blanket is organic since the wool grew on a sheep. If you were to make a list of organic substances, believe it or not, it should include cotton, cardboard, linen, most food, including banana peels, but not salt, cork, particle board and ivory, but not glass, mulch, hay and prunes, but not silverware, CDs, or Mount Rushmore. Organic is a word that also describes farm goods that were not fertilized with laboratory chemicals. It's true that organic things decompose a lot faster than inorganic things, and that's good for the environment. Our last term for today's lesson is facta non verba. For the definition of this Latin expression, let's call upon unum pluribus. Mr. Pluribus, what is the definition of facta non verba? It means deeds, not words. Don't give me promises. Show me action. Don't tell me tomorrow. Do it now. We should try not to put off things. Make a list, put the important things on top, and then, one at a time, turn that list into facta non verba. Okay, let's go to my laboratory and do some facta non verba. Eighteen twelve, you beat me to the lab. You know the rules, watch and listen, but no interrupting. Today we're going to make a postal scale for one ounce letters. It's going to be done in about 12 steps, each one kind of easy. The last step will be the calibration. We're going to use oak, which is a hard wood and also heavy. It's good for bases. So let me measure this. We'll make a square base. There we go. There's our base. I have two pipes here. They're made of brass, and one fits in the other, quite like a, a trombone. And I have a special device here called a pipe cutter, which is going to cut right through this brass pipe, nice and neat. Simple as that. And here's the other one. Okay, this is the main shaft of the postal scale. Let's take a second to get it dead center. If we connect the corners, that should give us the center. We want to make this as perpendicular as possible. And there's our base. I've just glued this piece of wood onto the base so that I can put the calibration on this piece of wood. And now it's time to put the magnets on. I have one big magnet, we're going to put it on the bottom. And then if you watch, each successive magnet 
will be put on with a flip so that they're repelling each other. There. There's the magnetic spring for our postal scale. The wire indicator. This is brass wire, it's very thin. We're gonna take a, a length of it. Cut it. Going to tie this thin brass wire around this round piece of plastic just for form. And I will snip off some excess, leaving about a half inch there so that I can glue this on to a magnet later. Right now I'm going to paint it red because most indicators on thermometers or scales are red. Take some red spray paint. That's all we need to make that indicator red. Let's cut the styrofoam, which is going to be the top. You could do this with a kitchen knife or a, or a saw. It's a lot easier to cut than oak. top of our letter scale. We're going to cut a, or drill a piece of wood to attach the brass pipe to the styrofoam platform. And now we'll cut that to a square. We're going to glue this wooden support onto the bottom of the styrofoam. And we're also going to glue the upper part of the brass shaft right in there. And let that dry. I have printed out a calibration from the computer. It starts at zero and it goes to one ounce. We're going to cut these up here are the two calibrations. We're going to put one on top of the other and cut them in the middle. And we're gonna use the top of one and the bottom of the other. Put in the bottom half of the calibration. And the top half. Top has finished drying. Now the platform. We have to adjust the calibration so that zero lines up with that red indicator that we made. And now I have a one ounce frame of reference, the fishing weight. This is how much mail is allowed on a first class envelope without putting extra postage. And we're going to put it on the scale. And I'm going to calibrate that to one ounce now. Okay, now that we have our scale built and calibrated, 
Let's see if this uh, envelope is overweight for a one ounce letter. I think it's just gonna make it. And now that you know about calibrations, let's see what you know about the rest of the words from today's lesson. And now for Dr. Esperanto's quiz. Listen and watch each of the clues and pick the word from today's lesson that best fits the description. Merit badges, rank badges, and the Medal of Honor. Facta non verba. Could someone tell me the exact time? It's two o'clock. Thank you. Calibrate. When it comes to defining words, synonyms are this. Succinct. Eyelids are this. Translucent. Aha! Cognition. Dr. Esperanto, what are you reading? I'm reading an unabridged dictionary. Comprehensive. Leaves, grass, and flowers, but not bricks. Organic. Mass media. When it comes to sunscreens and lotions, this kind would be the most effective. <music> Opaque. The cornea of the eye. Transparent. And now it's time to pick two contestants from our studio audience for Cognition Corner. And today's contestants will be Vivian and Elias. Yes! Please send in the contestants. Hello, Elias and Vivian. Thank you for being with us today on Cognition Corner. Uh, we have a language arts category. Today, it's over and under words. Every answer starts with either over or under. There are 10 questions. As soon as you know the answer, please punch in on your lights and I'll call on you. Here goes. When two things cover the same area. Elias. Overlap. Overlap is correct. Police agents in plain clothes. Vivian. Undercover. Undercover is correct. Completely cloudy. Elias. Overcast. Overcast is correct. The water current beneath the surface at the beach. Too much time. We're looking for the word undertow. Next, spot for deodorant. Elias. Underarm. Underarm is correct. An additional period in sports. Elias. Overtime. Overtime is correct. Predicted loser. Vivian. Underdog. Underdog is correct. Clothing worn next to the skin. Vivian. Underwear. Underwear. To not see or notice. Vivian. Overlook. Overlook is correct. To deny an objection in court. 
Vivian. Overrule. Overrule is correct. And Vivian, you have won. Congratulations. And congratulations to you, Elias. And to our audience, goodbye, good luck, and see you next time on Universal Words. Congratulations. You did a great job.